Welcome back to Hot Rod High School. In today's episode, we're going to be checking brake rotor runout using a dial indicator. So I have my dial indicator. It's just on this nice little flexible attachment here and connected to a vice grip, ready to be set up on our brake rotor. Now, brake rotor runout can be caused by a, a few different things. Um, the most likely culprit, the, the thing that happens the most often, is having the uh, brake rotor get overheated. And when they overheat, they warp, and that's going to cause it to have excessive runout. We should probably explain the term runout while we're talking about this too. So runout is how much the brake wants to move side to side while it's rotating. Uh, a little bit of runout is actually a good thing. Having about one thousandth to maybe two thousandths of an inch runout is going to help kick back the brake pads and move those brake pads slightly away from the brake disc. Uh, that's going to help uh, keep you from having brake drag. It's going to help fuel economy, all that kind of stuff. Excessive brake rotor runout, anything over really three thousandths of an inch, and you're going to start having vibration issues. If you've ever been in a car where you hit the brake pedal and the whole car wanted to vibrate. Uh, that's usually a brake rotor runout issue that is causing that problem. Um, one thing to be aware of too, if you check a brake rotor for runout and you find that the runout is excessive, you always want to remove the brake rotor from the vehicle and check the flange behind the brake rotor um, on the spindle. Uh, because there are times when uh, a little bit of rust buildup on that flange could cause the brake rotor runout issue. Uh, it could be that you have a, a bad wheel bearing um, or maybe the flange is bent. Uh, one thing to be aware of is you don't want to simply check for brake rotor runout, find out that, uh, you know, find an excessive reading um, and order new brakes for your customer only to find out that that didn't cure the issue because it was actually something behind the brake rotor causing the issue. So make sure you're being thorough and if you do find excessive runout, check everything else down the line um, before you make that recommendation to the customer. I will say the most common cause though is overheated brakes. Uh, once the brakes get overheated, they have a tendency to warp and that'll cause excessive runout. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and set up our runout gauge. Now, one thing about this, I don't wanna clamp this gauge onto any of the painted parts. I don't wanna clamp it up here where this is a painted uh, portion of the vehicle. I don't wanna clamp it to uh, the sway bar or anything else that has been painted because I could mar up the paint, I could cause rusting issues. You never wanna cause any damage to the customer's vehicle while you're working on it. Uh, we got this bolt right back here. So this is gonna be a perfect place to clamp our, our gauge to. So I'm now ready to clamp my gauge up to that bolt that I showed you a moment ago. And I'm just gonna take the vice grips here and put them right on to that bolt that's right there. And adjust them a little bit, not too much. And now we are clamped on to that bolt right there using our vice grips. Now we are going to set the gauge in place and then we will tighten, just turn this, there's a little red knob, which is very difficult to see, but there's this little red knob right here. And when we loosen that, then this whole thing kind of goes limp. When we tighten it, then it stiffens up in place and that'll keep it in place for us while we're making our measurement. So now I'm gonna take my gauge and put it in place against the brake rotor. And you notice how I can move the little needle on here and how it comes out the backside there. I wanna have the gauge be about halfway down on here. You don't wanna have it just barely touching because you might get a faulty measurement. So I wanna push it down a little bit onto the brake rotor. And then once again, just grabbing onto that little red 
uh, knob on the back here. And I'll just tighten that up into place. So now my needle should, or my, my uh, dial shouldn't move. So now all you gotta do is spin the brake rotor a full one full revolution and see how much the needle moves while the brake rotor is spinning. If the brake rotor's needle moves less than two thousandths of an inch, you, you got good run out. Um, and if it's more than that, then you might need to do some further diagnostics. So we'll just take and spin. And it only moved about one thousandths of an inch during that entire uh, time that it was rotating, uh, which is to be expected. Uh, we just did the on-car brake lathe. We just used that uh, tool on this particular brake, which is going to really take down any run out that this brake would have. But if that needle were to wobble, if it, if it moved more than like three marks or four marks on this, then we might say that, okay, there's some excessive run out. And I've seen ones that were really bad before that moved like 10 or 15 marks um, and definitely had a pedal pulsation um, in that vehicle. So it's a very simple job, a uh, very easy job to do. It's gonna be one of those that uh, anytime that a customer comes in with a brake system issue, you're typically going through, you're measuring the, the brake thickness, you're, you're measuring the run out, um, you're measuring the pad thickness. Uh, anytime you're doing a brake inspection on a vehicle, you're probably doing this one. And then obviously, uh, especially if the customer is complaining of a pulsation being felt when the brakes are applied.